We get a lot of requests to show Vilcabamba, Ecuador. If you're not familiar with Vilcabamba, it has been popular for a very long time with both tourists and expats from all around the world. It's about a 45 minute drive south of Loja, Ecuador, which we featured in a couple previous videos. It has a reputation for being a hippie, new age community, but that is changing. It was originally considered a blue zone for Dan Buettner's famous book. However, they didn't have accurate birth records because people live for so long there that 100 years ago, they didn't have good record keeping. So they didn't actually include it in the final list for the book, but a lot of people still think of it as a blue zone. A lot of things have changed since our first visit, which was over three years ago. So in this video, we're going to first talk about those things that have changed, and then we're going to talk about the pros and cons of Vilcabamba in case you're considering a visit or a move there. Since we were there, Vilcabamba has grown. There were more people, more businesses, a wider variety of businesses, and we saw more traffic. Yeah, there's even a Serbian Trega there now. I'm not yeah. sure how long that's been there, but we didn't see it before. It's also a lot more spruced up. We noticed a lot of buildings had a fresh coat of paint and there were several pretty murals, new murals around town, new buildings. Looks like it had a lot of revitalization has been done. The last time we were in Vilcabamba, we saw more retirees, but this time we saw younger people and more families with young children. We also saw a lot of new construction. They're building a lot of new homes in the area. And now for the pros, if you're considering a visit or a move there. And the first one is a big one, and it's only 5,200 feet in elevation, which is quite a bit lower than most of the other mountain towns, especially Cuenca and Quito. And that lower elevation means that it's warmer and you have less issues with altitude sickness because there's more oxygen. It's a beautiful area surrounded by mountains. It's in a mountain valley and it's a lot drier and just warmer and beautiful and blue skies there. Yes, I was quite warm when we were there after walking around. I had to break out my fan and sit down in the shade to give you an idea. <laughs> we were chilly elsewhere when traveling throughout Ecuador, but not Vilcabamba. Yeah, well, especially in the mountains, not so much on the coast, it's no. warm there. But yeah, we were dripping with sweat. Yes. My hat was soaking wet by the time we got done walking around town. Vilcabamba is a small town, and this could be a pro or a con, depending upon your point of view. It is also very family friendly. Yeah, we saw lots of kids playing in the street and in the park, there's a central square where it seemed like a lot of families gather to hang out with each other. The, adults talk while the kids play. It was felt so much like when we were kids, like just an old small town vibe. It's a very safe community. We walked all over the place. We felt extremely safe. Kids walking by themselves, which is actually pretty common throughout Ecuador. And we felt extremely safe the last time, last time we were there. And we had multiple people tell us how safe they feel living there, even single people. Vilcabamba is also very walkable. There's a lot of shops around town for you to do your shopping, as well as a weekly Mercado over by the bus station, lots of restaurants, and there's trails around town too. But there's also the Mixtos, the trucks, if you want to live further out or if your hotel is further out, it's easy to go catch one of those and take it to wherever you're staying. Yes, because Vilcabamba has excellent public transportation. They have lots of Mixtos, they have traditional taxis, and they have a pretty active bus terminal. Yeah, the buses run mainly to Loja and some of the other towns around there. And the buses are very cheap. It costs about $20 to go from Vilcabamba into Loja, although we paid our cab driver from Loja only $15 to drive us there. But we were told that the going rate from Vilca to Loja is $20. And one of the Mixtos, not yeah. by bus. Yeah, the bus is like a couple bucks. Vilcabamba has a wide variety of restaurants. We were shocked to see a Thai restaurant. There's the Indian restaurant, the UFO restaurant, which has been there forever, which has falafels. Of course, there's traditional Ecuadorian food. I think you could find pretty much anything you wanted in Vilcabamba. Yeah, lots of different restaurants. And our friends slash family, our adopted family in Cuenca, Chinu and Ebi opened a restaurant, a Paradise South. And of course, we had to go there for our lunch while we were in Vilca. There's also plenty of ATMs, which is a concern. We often had to go into Montanita to get money because the one and only ATM in Alone was out of order for a long time. I think someone actually robbed it. <laughs> and that is an issue when you're kind of out in the middle of nowhere. That was a thing in Mindo too, that there weren't any ATMs. So yay Bocabamba for keeping those babies stocked. <laughs> 
Hiking is also great in Vilcabamba. If you're an outdoorsy type person, you're gonna find a lot of great hiking trails up to Mondongo, which is that really cool rock formation. And then the Rumi Wilco Trail along the river is just beautiful to walk along that crystal clear mountain river. We love walking on that. There's also a lot of bird watching if you're a birder, cause there's, it's beautiful, lots of flowering trees. So the birds congregate there. If you want to live with other expats, then Bilcabamba may be the right place for you because the expat community has really grown there. Yeah, we were surprised to see how many expats were there walking around. A lot of you stopped us and we love meeting all yes. of you guys. Because there's a lot of expats, it also means there's a lot of English speakers. So it's pretty easy just to speak English there. Although we never encourage that. We always encourage you to learn Spanish, at least the basic taxi, mercado and restaurant Spanish. It'll make your life so much better here and it's just respectful. And now for the cons. Our first is that if you need to do any significant shopping, you will need to go into Loja because Vilcabamba does not have a traditional grocery store like a Super Maxi or a Tia. They just have the little Mercaditos, the mom and pop stores. So the shopping is limited. Yeah, also clothes and shoe shopping is limited. They do have some of that there, but if you want to really get your shop on, Loja is the place to do it. Healthcare is another con because they only have a small hospital which is suitable for emergencies or little scrapes and cuts and bruises. If you need any major medical care, you will need to go into Loja as well. Yeah, and there's a lot of hospitals in Loja to choose from, including a really popular cancer clinic. We have heard from several people that the real estate prices are going up because it is a small community and more and more people are choosing to move there. Yeah, it's a su supply and demand issue. There isn't much of a supply and there's a growing demand, not just from expats moving there, but also a lot of Ecuadorians are moving there because many of them are working online now after the pandemic, so they can work from anywhere and Vilcabamba is an appealing place for a lot of people. I mentioned in the pros that there is a sizable expat community, but this can also be considered a con depending on your perspective. Honestly, Bocabamba has the biggest concentration of expats that we've seen in one area as we travel throughout Ecuador. Yeah, when we go to Cuenca and Manta and Salinas, we see expats, gringos, foreigners, but not in the same concentration as we did in Vilcabamba. We were kind of shocked by it, to be honest with you, that how many expats are living there now and for such a small community. We did see a lot of tourists though, so that I think that some of those expats were there um, from other countries just visiting, but mm -hmm. it was noticeably different. Another con is that Vilca is kind of isolated. It's about an hour and a half to the airport in Catamayo. So it's kind of a drive. It costs $40 and a mixto to get there. The buses are much cheaper, but also they take a lot longer. And it's about 45 minutes south of Loja. And when they have Paro, sometimes they shut that road off and you can't get out of the Vilcabamba area. And there just isn't as much to do as some other areas throughout Ecuador, such as Cuenca. So if you're one of those people that needs a wide variety of things to do and you want more cultural activities like museums and symphonies, then Bocabamba is probably not the place to, for you. But if you like to hike or maybe do some meditation and yoga, maybe you'll love it. This video would not be complete if we didn't show you one of our favorite things to do in Bocabamba. No, I did not get her from the front. Sorry, <laughs> I forgot. I saw her. Uh, I can't wait to eat this though. I know. That young lady selling these homemade energy balls, they are made out of pasta de mani, y miel de panela, y chocolate, chocolate cacao, cosas, oh, nueces. And they were a dollar each. Mmm. Mmm. Well, mm. they're really good. Wow. Mmm. They're like a no-bake cookie. They are. Delish. Perfect for our walk along the river, JP. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Pominos. I think that basketball court has seen better days. What do you think, Amelia? <laughs> I think so. It'd be I'm, hard to bounce a ball on that court. I'm impressed by this guy coming up behind us carrying all the brooms. We are at 5,000 feet here in Boca Bamba, and the temperature is perfect for me. I know JP said he wished there was more sun, but I kind of like it a little overcast so I don't get so warm on our hike. And I am loving this incredibly beautiful and crystal clear river. It's really interesting because the one in Loja is pretty dark brown and we've seen some other ones that truly look like they're chocolate rivers, but this one looks, reminds me a lot of Colorado, JP. Yeah, or, like, or Arkansas. Like we could be in Clear Creek, 
Clear Creek County right now. <laughs> Easy for me to say. <laughs> All right, let's go. I think this has really washed out a lot since the last time we were here. Yeah. This uh, used to be all trail and now it looks like more like riverbed. Where is it? Right there. You have to. Trail. Amelia doesn't see the trail. She's got trail blindness. I don't know, unconventional. So this looks like a trail to me. What do you think? Maybe this isn't a trail. I know it's hard to tell because it, all the trails have been washed out, looks like. Yeah, I do not think this is a trail. I think we need to go back on the other side, which is a much more clearly marked trail. <laughs> Are you afraid of getting lost again? No. <laughs> two times in two days is too much for you? <laughs> no, but you know, you gotta stick to the trail, JP. There's the rest of the trail, Amelia, on the other side of this fence. Oh, nice. Oh, except that... I know, we have to go through the barbed wire. Here, All you right. can do it, and then I'll hand you my bag. Okay. Interesting. I didn't realize we were on this property. Careful. And we're out. I told you the trail was over here. It just got washed away, I think. Yeah, yeah I think you're right. Well, we can try going the other way on the way back. Yeah, I'm pretty sure so this... So it's not cutting through somebody's property. This may come out to a bridge. Oh, well, let's find If we it. go that way. That would be nice. Well, let's see. Maybe this turn. Maybe this leads us to a bridge over the river. There used to be a bridge over here. I remember crossing it last time. I don't think there's one over here because it appears to all be washed out. Yeah, this is really washed out. Yeah, this trail has definitely been washed out. And I don't really want to go swimming to get across the river here, Amelia. I agree. So let's go back let's the go other back. way. Wow, look at this flood zone. I know. Wow, well, last time we were here, this river was tiny. It was just this, yeah. this area right here. This, all of this is just flooded. Watch your step. I know. <laughs> Amelia, El Puente Esta, yeah. I told you there was a bridge around here somewhere. I'm not sure which way to go. Looks like they're working on the trail over there, but that may not be the trail. I don't know, it looks like they're working on it. Yeah. The sign back there said to stop looking at your phone and pay attention to nature. And here I am looking at my phone, but does it really count if I'm filming nature? Hmm. I don't know, that's a really good question. I think maybe you should take breaks from the phone and look yeah. up once in a while. Okay, that sounds you good. You can do both. All right. <laughs> this is the trail we walked on Last time when we left Madre Tierra and came down to Vilca, yeah. we walked out all the way on this trail, but it wasn't all washed out then. You smell that jasmine? Yeah, that was amazing. I think that's Brescia here. Brescia? Brescia? I don't know, but it smells incredible. It does. Wow, look at all this. This is why it smells so strong. I just found five dollars just laying right there on the ground. It's my lucky day, Amelia. Watch out for the horse poop. <laughs> Thanks. It's kind of a dusty road. <laughs> yes, uh, you're probably gonna have to wipe your uh, lens, lens off, off after this. <laughs> yeah, all right, let's go. This will take us right back into Vilcabamba and we won't even have to walk on the main road. Nice. There's the Vilca Agua plant. They bottle water here, which we have been drinking in Loja. These doors are your height, Amelia. I know. <laughs> I would have to duck to yes, go in them. Would. 
Yeah, JP, you're taller yeah, than that like door. It feel, makes me feel like a giant. <laughs> it is really warm here. This is the warmest I've been since we left the coast. It is only about 5,000 feet, so it's much warmer. And we're both sweating from our hike. Which was a super easy hike. I know, it was easy. But it was this flat. Full sun is hot. Now we're gonna go try and find something to drink. Are you getting cooled off now? Yes. We stopped and got our Vilca Agua. We just showed you the plant where they bottled this. Yes, unfortunately you cannot drink the tap water here. No. Nope. Only in Cuenca and parts of Quito and Guayaquil. But this is really good. It is, although we hate to buy plastic. I know, I hate to have it in the plastic, but it is what it is. Yes, we have to have water. If you enjoyed this video, we think you're gonna like that one too. And if you are thinking about moving to that area and maybe you want a little bit more local vibe, you could check out some of the smaller towns such as Malacatos instead of living in Boca Bamba proper. All right, guys, before you leave, leave us a like, please, and we will see you all in our next video. Ciao. Ciao.